Hi, here's a scene I rendered in Blender a few days ago. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, this is the Desmos graph I've been making for the past few days. A graph showcasing casted shadows which can be rendered in near real time. Now, casted shadows in Desmos are nothing new. I made them in Desmos Plane and in some of my old Ray Marchers. Havanira's Steve graph and Desmos Diner have them as well, as well as Sam Brunicini's basketball graph and Math Enthusiast 314's 3D model owner graph. There are many others like this. However, while these graphs are marvels of engineering in their own right, their casted shadows all come with some limitations. Many of them are slow, only cast shadows onto a single plane, or, in the case of Desmos Plane, calculate their shadows at compile time, which means that they are fixed in place in exchange for being faster, and the calculations aren't even done in Desmos, so I don't even know if that really counts. This new graph I've made attempts to address all three of these issues. First things first, it's fast. Well, in a relative sense. At least it's better than some of my other graphs that takes 30 seconds, 18 hours, or an entire week to render a single frame. I may make a video on that one later. Second thing second, the shadows aren't restricted to a single plane. I can cast the shadows of objects onto other objects and even themselves with ease. This is what makes the horrendous FPS seem good, because this is a hard problem to crack. Oh, and third things third, the shadows are calculated at runtime, in Desmos rather than in a TypeScript program ahead of time like with Desmos Plane. That way I can move them around at will. Anyway, I'm guessing you'd like to hear how it works. Let's get started. Now, if you don't understand how Desmos 3D rendering works, watch this video. It goes over how to create a rotatable cube in Desmos. Okay, let's go over the shadows work. So 3D objects are just collections of triangles, right? So at their simplest, you can make a shadow by taking one triangle and casting its shadow onto another triangle. I'll call the one casting the triangle the caster and the one receiving the shadow the receiver. Alright, so how do we cast a triangle's shadow onto another triangle in Desmos? There's some limitations we need to be aware of. In particular, a single triangle can only be a single color. No gradients, nothing of that sort. Just a single, flat, solid color. What this means is that we can't add a shaded region onto an existing triangle. We need to make a new polygon to represent the shaded region. Here's how we'll do that. First of all, we need to somehow project the caster onto the receiver. This can be accomplished with the muller trombore ray triangle intersection formula. I won't explain how the whole formula works here because that isn't important. However, the information it outputs is important. Now, by default, this function will return the distance from the start of the ray to its intersection point with the triangle. If there's no intersection, it'll return a dummy value to indicate that there is no intersection, such as negative 1. Now, if all three vertices of the caster landed on the receiver triangle, this would be all the information we would need to produce a shadow. However, what if this isn't the case? What if there's some missing vertex we need to know where it would have landed so we can properly clip the shadow so that it's inside of the receiver? Fortunately, the muller trombore ray triangle intersection formula has us covered here as well. Before it returns the intersection distance, it first must collect some additional information. Under the hood, what the formula is doing is first creating a plane that's coplanar with the receiver. Then it determines where the ray intersects that plane. Eventually, it figures out whether that intersection point lies within the receiver triangle, and it eliminates cases that aren't. However, if we remove this step, we still have this point on the plane that we can use for whatever we want. If we do this for all three points, we get the caster triangle projected onto a plane which perfectly lines up with the receiver triangle, giving us a shadow. Now what we have to do is clamp the shadow so that it's only inside the receiver triangle. In other words, we have to find the polygon defined as the intersection between these two triangles. Now how do we do this? Well, it divides an algorithm for doing exactly this. First of all, let's take a look at these six triangle vertices. Any vertex that is inside the other triangle is going to be part of the intersection polygon, so let's highlight those and add them to a list of intersection polygon vertices. In addition, any points of intersection between the triangle's edges are going to be part of the polygon, so let's add those to the list as well. If we were to turn this list into a polygon now, we get something like this, which as you might expect is undesirable. The problem here is that while we have all the correct points, they're in the wrong order. Since all of these intersection polygons are convex, we can take their average vertex position and find the angle of each point relative to that average position. We then sort them in order of increasing angle to get the proper polygon. There, now we've got the intersection polygon. And since we have the intersection polygon, our job is done. We have a shadow of a triangle casted onto another triangle. Of course, this is just a single triangle. What about an entire 3D scene? To add casted shadows to an entire 3D scene, we just need to iterate over every single possible pair of triangles, since in theory any triangle could be either a caster, a receiver, or both. And there we go, those are casted shadows. Well, not really, because this method produces a ton of false positives. I mean, look at this, it's crazy. We can get rid of these false positives, however, all while actually making the shadow caster faster by eliminating shadow polygons that can't exist early on, before they've had the chance to undergo a whole lot of expensive computation. Here's a few low-hanging fruit. We can filter out cases where caster and receiver are the same polygon. We can filter out cases where the receiver is pointing away from the light source, since those triangles will be dark anyway. We can filter out cases where the caster is pointing toward the light source, because unless we have a single polygon-thick geometry, that will be redundant, since two layers of polygons will be casting a shadow otherwise. We can filter cases where the receiver's vertices are all closer to the light source than the caster's, making a shadow impossible. And finally, we can filter out cases where the receiver is front of the plane defined by the caster. 
While some of these optimizations are purely for speed, others help get rid of the false positives, most of which are caused by our algorithms not implicitly filtering out receivers in front of casters. Alright, that was a mouthful. Are we done yet? Actually, we're not done just yet. See, there's something I glossed over throughout this entire video. Depth sorting. Triangles in a 3D mesh must be sorted by depth so that faraway ones don't render in front of close-by ones. Remove depth sorting and this is what you'll get. Not good. In Desmos, depth sorting can be performed with this two of argument sort function. This function changes the order of the first list using the sorting criteria of the second list. So if I were to have 54321 as the second list, then the first list would have its order reversed, since that's what the function would do if it were sorting 54321 since it sorts in ascending order. Consequently, to do depth sorting, use two arguments sort with the polygons as the first list and negative depths as the second list. That way, the polygons will be sorted based on the way their depths would be sorted. We want negative depths because we want the farthest polygons to have the lowest depths, and thus be the first on the list, so that closer polygons are drawn later on top of them. Alright, so how do shadows fit into this? Well, it's actually quite simple. A shadow uses the depth of its receiver, minus a very tiny amount so that it renders in front of it. It's as if the shadows are essentially part of the receiver. And that's how I made real-time dynamic shadow casting in my Desmos Bay 3D rendering engine. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did creating this engine. It's an interesting project and certainly one I'll be reusing for future Desmos creations. Thanks for watching and happy Desmosing.